Slayaway Camp Purchase Cut is a puzzle indie game that came to console platforms last fall, but now it comes over to the Nintendo Switch this week. Originally, it was a mobile puzzle game that got some extra content and higher resolution visuals on Xbox One and PS4, but now that experience also comes over to Nintendo's new hybrid platform. It's a charming puzzle game that mixes cute visuals with bloody ones, yet manages to stay cute and hilarious. Slay Away Camp doesn't necessarily have one big narrative behind it, instead it has a bunch of minor story backdrops for each of the section of puzzles. Puzzles in the game are grouped together into categories, or more specifically, films. These films are parodies or self-aware gags on old VHS horror films and the classic tropes of the genre. You get the likes of the original Slay Away Camp, the sequel, and of course the mandatory third installment that has to be in 3D because the tie-in with the name is just too good to pass up. Each of these sectioned off puzzles play out a tiny intro video that summarizes the plot of that world or that movie. You can think of it as a trailer for the movie. That's pretty much as far as the story goes. The trailers are cute humorous punches at the expense of the classic horror film gags. While it may not be some sort of grand narrative, I appreciated the cute and funny moments in the videos that worked beautifully with the chibi-like characters on display. When you first start the game, you'll be asked if you want to turn up the gory effects or turn them off completely. I personally found the gory effects to be the most charming moments of the game, so I always left them on and even cranked up the blood splatter in the options menu when I realized that was even a feature. After all this, you're introduced to the game's main hub. Here you have an assortment of different features and unlockables. Under the gore pack section, you can find a list of possible kills or rather executions. These are tiny cinematics to play out when the right scenario is met during gameplay. There are some of the most humorous moments of the game as you get to see a bad chibi Jason knockoff murder other adorable chibi-like characters. Under the killer section you have an assortment of playable characters or I guess killers. You can unlock new characters by completing sections of levels categorized in movies or purchasing new killers in a blind box feature. Don't worry though, these blind boxes can only be purchased using in-game currency rather than real world cash. The assortment of killers or playable characters range from the library of different horror films from the likes of Pennywise the Clown from It, to the more obscure characters like the David S. Pumpkins knockoff from Tom Hanks' SNL sketch. There's over 60 playable characters too, so there's plenty for you to collect and unlock. We then have another shop where you can purchase new executions and kills that you can then add on to your gore pack selection. Some of these include a grenade explosion and a juice blender execution, just to name a few, but in total there's more than 90 available. Lastly, there is the movie section which is pretty much the different assortment of levels in the game. Each group of levels are bundled up into a movie that categorizes them into a certain movie setting. If you played the original Slay Away Camp, the special edition contains the base game plus the new additional levels from the Deluxe Edition, My Gory Valentine, Hell Camp, Monthly Murders, and more. In total, there's over 300 levels for you to play through. Entering one of the levels, you're introduced into the sliding puzzle system. You control Skullface on the square-like grid where your goal is to kill all the citizens on the grid and then proceed to exit out the level through the marked portal. Sounds simple enough, right? You control the character with the analog stick, but if you're playing on the Switch, you can also use the touchscreen controls as well. Sliding the character in one direction has them move continuously until they hit an obstacle. It reminds me of the ice gems from the earlier Pokemon games. Levels start rather simple at first, but slowly get increasingly more difficult with new obstacle additions. Some of the early obstacles include cops that shoot you down if you land directly in front of them, as well as limits on the amount of turns you can make in a single game. New obstacles and themes are introduced with every new movie, increasing the challenge that the game has to offer. This game is really good about giving you second chances though. At any time in the game, you can actually rewind the turn or just restart the level from the beginning, letting you quickly try a new maneuver if you messed up. You're even able to skip levels by paying a fee if you find a certain level too difficult, but want to continue on with the level progression and come back to this puzzle later. As you complete more puzzles, you'll begin to earn game currency. The same game currency that you can use to purchase new killers and gore packs from the game's main menu. This definitely kept me coming back for more puzzles as I really wanted to see the different killers and kill animations that could be used in the game. That motivated me to keep solving puzzles and earning the money required to do so. Slay Away Camp adopts a visual style that reminds me a lot about the mobile game Monument Valley. It's very cube theme overall, and I mean the entire level is essentially a square. Even that setup reminds me a bit of Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. It's not an amazing looking game by any means, but it's really cute looking. It's weird to see something so small, chubby, and rather adorable mixed in with something so menacing and evil. You're seeing little cute people get murdered in gruesome ways, and personally, I couldn't help but giggle at the cinematics because of how ridiculous it all seemed. 
It's not all great though, judging the UI, it looks quite apparent that this game was originally a mobile game. The icons for the menu buttons are big and at the center. I feel like even if you can play the game on the Nintendo Switch's touchscreen, they should have at least rearranged them a bit to make it look more like a console game, some sort of optimization for larger TV displays at least. The music in Slay Away Camp is mostly heavy synth music that goes along well with the brutal visuals on display. It really does go well with the whole 80s theme that the movies this game parodies takes place in. It puts you in the mindset of being the serial killer in these puzzle scenarios. With that said, while the music is good, I would have loved to see a bit more effort put into the Switch version's HD rumble. Why? Because, well, there really isn't any. Considering the game is only just now coming to the Nintendo Switch almost 6 months later after the PS4 and Xbox One version, I would have loved to see the HD rumble be used in some sort of fashion, at least during the cinematic kill scenes. Slay Away Camp Butcher's Cut is a fun and charming puzzle game. The cute visuals with the absurdly gruesome kills make for a hilarious combination that's just too hard not to laugh at. The puzzles themselves are enjoyable and get increasingly more challenging at a gradual pace with the introduction of new obstacles. If you want a fun and entertaining evening of puzzle solving with a nice horror aesthetic applied to it, then you can't really go wrong with this game, even if I wish a bit more effort was put into the port's UI and HD rumble features. That does it for my review of Slay Away Camp for the Switch, Xbox One, PS4, and PC. If you have any questions about the game or future review requests, please leave them in the comments down below. You can also reach me over on Twitter, Instagram, or my Discord, which are all linked in the description. If you enjoyed this review, then please consider dropping a like on the video and subscribe for more content just like this. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.